Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The organizing committee has asked me to talk about pediatric urology, the origins at this Malaysian Urological Conference. I put together photographs, some data on pediatric urology development, especially in Malaysia. Ms. Pungudri has done a scooping survey of the literature and I've gone through each one of them and I select a few for this lecture. The earlier articles are written by none other than Sir David Ian's Williams, who is a pediatric urologist in London. And from his readings, he has a consuming interest. That means a very strong interest in pediatric urology, but it is his adult practice. In other words, it's the adult urology practice that actually provided his livelihood. And I must say this applies the same to the urologist in Malaysia. When he went to America, he noticed, he wrote in this article, he noticed a rift between the urologist and the pediatric surgeon, which I had not encountered at home. At home meaning London. Perhaps because there were so few of us in the business, but there was plenty of work for all to do. Again, I must say, this is the similar situation in Malaysia, where there's so much pediatric urology workload that there's actually no need to fight for the work. Dr. Philip Bransley, who was the pediatric urologist in London for many years, and I did spend some months with him in 1988. After he retired from London, he worked part-time in Pakistan. And his conclusion, when he wrote an article on the future of pediatric urology is, the importance of worldwide collaboration, worldwide cooperation. Two other articles, review articles regarding pediatric urology also come to the same conclusion, that there has to be collaboration between pediatric and adult surgeons as well. In America, the pediatric, the Society of Pediatric Urology was formed in 1951, whereas in, the, in England, the British Association of Pediatric Urologists was only formed in 1992. What is the situation now? As I did my research at the latest scientific, surgical scientific meeting in Malaysia of the College of Surgeons on 28th August this year, the program included two topics. The first is on undescended testes. And this is a pediatric surgeon teaching the general surgeons how to do orchidopexy. And at the end of the session, before their closing ceremony, there was a debate which is chaired by none other than the president of the Malaysian Urology Association, Professor Ong Teng Ek. And what was the topic? The topic was a debate as to whether the pediatric urologist, in this case, Dr. Mohan, and the adult urologist, Professor Christopher Ho, and the plastic surgeon, Dr. Margaret Liao, as to who is better suited to do hypospadias. So this is the current situation in Malaysia. But actually, what is this pediatric urology? What is the spectrum of medical conditions? In my mind, it, cons it consists of hydronephrosis, duplex, erythrocele, reflux, posterior trawaf, testic testis, groin surgery, hypospadias, neuropathic bladders, spinal bifida, voiding dysfunction, and now bladder bowel dysfunction. So it is a, a very big, and of course, pediatric stones. It is a very big health disease spectrum, and it's not just operations alone. And look at the healthcare personnel involved in care, taking care of them. It's not only the urologist who is especially suited to do urodynamics and stones. It involves the pediatric surgeons and the pediatric anesthetists, especially for children less than three years of age. The Americans, the, the uh, FDA has already put an uh, announcement that children under the age of three years, if they undergo repeated or prolonged general anesthesia, it can affect their cognitive development. And of course, the pediatricians, and especially the pediatric nephrologists. And nowadays, we have the developmental pediatrician. We need the neurologists, the neurosurgeons, the orth orthopedics, and of course, the supportive medical personnel, the physiotherapists, the rehabilitation uh, specialists, and of course, the primary doctor. So it is the pediatric urology is not just about doing pediatric urological surgical procedures. 
it is a whole spectrum of medical practice. What about the situation regarding manpower in Malaysia? I look at the Malaysian Specialist Registry and we have we do not have any pediatric urologists. In the UK, the British Association of Pediatric Urologists, I gather there are about 70 of them. In Malaysia, we have 138 urologists, 64 pediatric surgeons, and 22 pediatric nephrologists. I think any child with a medical condition tend to see the pediatrician who will then get referred to the pediatric nephrologist. And therefore, the pediatric nephrologist, they have a, a big practice of pediatric urology in Malaysia. Of course, in many places where we do not have the so-called subspecialists, they still see a general surgeon or a general pediatrician of which we have plenty in Malaysia. Sometimes there's some urgency in pediatric urology, especially if they are less than one year old or even less than three months old. And for such patients, if they subject them to general anesthesia, I mentioned earlier, it can affect negatively the brain development. Therefore, pediatric surgeons are at an advantage. Their strength is that they are better in handling neonates and small children, medically, surgically, and of course, the anesthetic and the nursing procedure. Whereas urologists, the strength in Malaysia is that they handle the stones. This is a patient uh, having ESWR done by Dr. Lim Mengxi, a Euro adult urologist in, in my town. They are better in urodynamics and they are used to handling scopes. So endoscopy is important. But in Malaysia, the adult urologists were there first. I gave a talk last month and one of the doctors gave me a feedback. My talk is about the prostate, but she, she sent me a private message and said that I did a clamp cystoplasty on her when she was nine years old and she is doing well. So, so in Malaysia, the urologists were established in 1974 uh, with the Institute of Urology and Nephrology. Now it is a seventh floor building. Of course, pediatric, uro pediatric surgeons have also progressed. They now they have a new children's hospital in Kuala Lumpur, and this is these are the pediatric nephrologists with the pediatric uh, urologist adult and, uh, and pediatric Miss Susan Wu. So we have progressed a long way. What is called GH care previously, now it's called Hospital Kuala Lumpur. And we actually have quite a big pediatric urological practice. I review all the pediatric stones in 1991. Dr. Patrick Ma wrote about the posterior trawaf and Dr. Chong wrote about spinal bifida. And this is we have a lot of pediatric stones as well. This is a picture from Dr. Susan Wu showing a large uh, erotic stone. And in Sabah, they have a uh, hospital Likas, which is a woman and children's hospital. And this is uh, Dr. Raja, who was uh, the, the pioneer and leading pediatric surgeon in Sabah. And she, she invited, he invited me for their campaign for, for, for hypospadias, for undescended testes. And this is the director of the hospital. This is the adult physician, uh, Datuk Nagapan, um, who is the father of Miss, Miss Pungodi. So we have a lot of collaboration uh, in Malaysia between the various disciplines to tackle, to provide the service of pediatric urology. So this is how, what I was talking about, Sabah, Sarawak, and West Malaysia. So I show you some figures from different centers. Okay, This is in Kota Baru with Mr. Ashraf, with the with the urologist in Alosta in East Coast. And this is the Sarawak General Hospital, which has been there for more than 100 years. And this is the pediatric nephrologist in the East Coast and pediatric nephrologist in Sabah. So patients who undergo surgery in a general hospital, this is the range of cases they have in a typical general hospital. They have hernotomy, hydrocyl, undescended testes, hypospadias, pyeloplasties, stones. So the urologist, the adult urologist has been there from the beginning. The general surgeon has been there from the beginning to provide this service. And of course, now we have more specialists, including the pediatric urologist and pediatric nephrologist. This is a publication courtesy from Dr. Te Kwan Chang, who is the head of, of urology in Sarawak, where we had Da Vinci robot for many years. And in, indeed, we use the Da Vinci robot for robot-assisted laparoscopic pyeloplasty. Hypospadias is still very common. It tends to be more advanced 
more 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 proximal hypospadias, and these are numbers that we do in Sarawak every year. So probably about two cases a month. And who are the people doing hypospadias? Even in the UK, published in the British Journal of Urology International in two zero zero five, many of them are done by urologists who who are general urologists. Some are done by pediatric urologists. Some are done by the plastic surgeons. So even in the UK, there's a spectrum of surgeons looking after pediatric cases. And we also document and publish our series. I publish uh, and I give a presentation and publish my series at the Australian New Zealand Journal of Surgery in 2012. Uh, Kamio Nodin published and, uh, and presented in the Malaysian Urological Conference in 1995. Dr. Geek looked at all the pediatric, uh, all the hypospadias done in West Malaysia. And Dr. Go and the pediatric, Dr. Go is a uro, adult urologist, and Dr. Tam, Professor Tampi Durai is a pediatric urologist. They published their series in 2007. And all these have, have a quite a high fistula rate of about 30%, 30%. Nowadays, we have many pediatric nephrologists, and this is published in the renal registry web website, showing that there's an increased in incidence of renal replacement therapy for pediatric patients. And of course, kidney transplantation is still the best treatment long-term for children with kidney failure. And these are the numbers that we have. At least I was involved with the pediatric kidney transplantation for some years until, until the pandemic. And we do probably about one pediatric uh, renal transplantation every, every month or every two months. What about growing surgery? I think growing surgery tend to be done by, by general surgeons as well. And these are the spectrum of, of, uh, of surgery done. Of course, torsion is an emergency. Trauma is an emergency. Testicular mouth design is, design is very common. Hernotomy can be an emergency. Hydrocele operations, varicocele operations, and testicular tumor. And according to a publication from the UK in 2010, you need to achieve some competency. And by competency, they say you probably have to do about 25 cases of growing surgery to be competent to operate on these cases, which may be done by pediatric surgeon, of course, uh, uh, adult urologists and general surgeons. Now, the next part of my lecture, I want to emphasize on the importance of teamwork, which is prevalent in Malaysia and hopefully in many countries. So this is the pediatric urology team in the local general hospital uh, with the pediatric doctors, with the chief pediatric surgeon in Malaysia, Dato Zakaria, he has just retired with the Miss Anjon, the chief uh, pediatric surgeon in Sarawak, and there is myself and Dr. Tay. So we work together. We the patients are in the pediatric ward, as we don't have a pediatric urology ward, and uh, we get together uh, whenever there's a conference to discuss the different cases. This is Miss Susan from Kuala Lumpur, Miss Pungkodi from Kuala Lumpur. These are the trainee urologists, and uh, and uh, this is Dr. Chia Wien, who is now down under. I mean, I mean in Australia. And he met recently with, uh, with Dr. Muller Sundrum, who is also trained in pediatric urology at the recent UAA, Urology Association of Asia. So there's good collaboration uh, among the pediatric, pediatric uh, doctors, pediatric surgeons, and the adult urologists in Malaysia and probably in Asia. This is the, the typical pediatric combined urology nephrology clinic where we have uh, pediatric nephrologist, myself, and then the trainee pediatric nephrologist at that time, Dr. Shelley. Now she is in charge of pediatric urology in my state, home state. And this is Dr. Yap, a pediatric nephrologist who came to the Sarawak Heart Center. And this is me visiting her in Kuala Lumpur. So we, we have a good team of people going around. Uh, this We invited Ms. Pungkodi to come from Kuala Lumpur to look at special cases. In, in this case, an extra fee patient is the pediatric surgeon, the nurses, and the pediatric anesthetist. And this is our next generation of trained doctors. This is Mr. Roger, who is doing a, a surgic, a endo endoscopic procedure. And this is the pediatric surgeon who actually look after the patient. And these are the specially trained pediatric nurses. So the importance of teamwork, the importance of referral, the importance of sharing important cases. With the use of social media, we also form our, so our special groups. We have a special interest group uh, composing of the Malaysian uh, urologists and pediatric surgeons. There are about 10 of us. We also have a journal club for the Asia Pacific 
uh, region with 21 of us. And we also have the Asia Pacific Association of Pediatric Urologists, which are meeting every now and then. Of course, the hardware is important. So if a patient has got a partial drug off, it requires urgent treatment. It can be treated endoscopically, uh, previously by, by endoscopic uh, diatomy, progression. Now we can use a cold knife or you can use the laser. But if the, the instrumentation is not available or social economy, the patient cannot travel to a tertiary center, we can still, we still do vesicostomies. If minimally invasive surgery is available, for example, in this case, Dr. Tay Kwan Chow did a laparoscopic uh, assisted by the robot pyeloplasty. And this shows another patient, courtesy of Ms. Pungkodi, where they do a minimally invasive open surgery, where, whereby with a small incision, we can do just as good a pyeloplasty. Now, just a word on training and service. Uh, I know that we have another two sessions on training and also a report on train of the fellowship by Mr. Roger. In, in Malaysia, we still use the FRCS urology where one of the sessions uh, during the exam is on pediatric urology. So the training urologists will have to uh, go through training program in pediatric urology to pass the FRCS urology through the Malaysian Board of Urology. And after that, many uh, Malaysian surgeons will go overseas for a fellowship uh, Roger and myself, we went to Great Ormond Street in London. Uh, Mr. Mullery went to Adelaide. Susan also went to Adelaide. And uh, Ms. Pungudi went to Manchester. Astraf in the East Coast went to Belgium. And Ms. Lim went to Taiwan. And of course, depending on where you work, you may be required because of service requirements to do uh, pediatric urology, especially in the East Coast, in Sabah, Sarawak, and in, I understand in Johor, the adult adult urologist does a lot of pediatric urology as well. We have pediatric urology workshops. This one such workshop when we had the Malaysian Urology Congress in Kuching in 2010, where we demonstrated how to do a heminephrectomy for a duplex system. And we also also have the adult, uh, we also have the APAPU meeting uh, in, in Kuala Lumpur some years ago, where we train many urologists to do, uh, to do complicated hyperspadias. So this is our our yearly uh, Malaysian Urology Association Advanced Urology course where we invite the pediatrician. This is the Dr. Chair, my classmate. He is a pediatric surgeon to help us with running the course. And this is the course in Singapore for the Asian uh, residence program. This is Ms. Lim, who, she is currently now in, in, uh, in Taiwan with, with uh, Dr. Stephen Young. And these are the, the ASEAN meetings where we regularly have sessions of pediatric urology. So my final take home message is that I think that there has to be a teamwork with doctors, in, including the pediatric surgeon, uh, pediatric uh, adult urologists with interest in pediatrics. And hopefully one day we have pure pediatric urologists. We need the nurses, the physiotherapists, the social worker, the pediatric anesthetist. We also need the hardware. We also need the, the special sutures. We also need to have proper audit and registries and publications regarding pediatric urology. As far as growing surgery is concerned, I think many of the adult surgeons will do growing surgery, especially for emergencies like obstructed hernias or torsion. For, for special cases like epispadias and extrophy, I think they should be concentrated to uh, a few centers. And in fact, we may even have to have global collaboration, uh, inviting surgeons from overseas to come and help us with such cases. So I hope I have inspired all of us to work together as a team. I think there's enough work for everyone and hopefully eventually there will be one pediatric urologist in every state in, in, in Malaysia and I think these children they deserve to have a better quality of care. Pediatric urology is a good specialty, it's not just a subspecialty, it's a strong unmet need for pediatric urology 